And I'm going to shift a little bit. I'd like to talk about um, newspapers and searching for information in newspapers. And I think that searching for vessels in newspapers is so valuable and so important. It, newspapers are an amazing collection, uh, an amazing resource for us to use when we're looking at history. As anybody who's read um, a newspaper, though, knows they're often, they are often incorrect. Of course, it is the first draft of history, and uh, there are often mistakes, and so they should always be taken with a, a, a grain of salt. I really don't think anybody should take what's published in the newspapers, the, especially, you know, smaller newspapers with a small mention or something, as that's maybe not what uh, what really happened, but it can be a great place to start in any case. And um, I'm going to start by looking at when, if you are looking for information about a specific newspaper, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, this listing from uh, Wikipedia, this list of online newspaper archives. It's really quite valuable. There's a huge amount of information in here. If you look at just the United States, I mean, you see the this is way down the list. These are uh, from all across the world. Um, but you find a lot of information here from a whole bunch of different um, whole bunch of different cities organized by state <clears throat> and then um, by usually by collection, sometimes by city and sometimes with the title of the um, newspapers that they have there. And so that can be a really uh, valuable uh, tool uh, to use here. <clears throat> Um, you may know about Chronicling America. Uh, Chronicling America is a, uh, a website that is managed by the Library of Congress that has got millions of pages of content in it from newspapers from 1770 to 1963. And it, it just seems fantastic. It seems unbelievable. But I'd but it is in some ways very unbelievable, a bit unbelievable. And I'd like to show other ways of um, getting around this. So if I do a search for the schooner Mariana, this, okay, this is the search I'm about to do. The schooner Mariana, because if I just do Mariana, of course, I'm going to uh, find a lot of names that aren't relevant. And I'm trying to find a vessel right now. This is what I really want to try to do. And I am limiting it to Maryland. So it's somewhat random, but... Um, this is a search that I'm going to do here. And what it did is it, it, there are 21 million pages in the entire collection. We're not looking at 21 million pages just from Maryland. We found eight results. And as you'll note, um, five of them are actually um, German. Uh, so this is, this is not super helpful, but we might find something useful here. Uh, and so this is May 8th, 19, 1895 from the evening capital. And there is a, a mention here. Um, of uh, the schooner um, Mary Anna Emma is actually the name of that one. Uh, but it seems a little bit surprising to me that we only found eight citations for all of uh, Maryland. And um, what I want to do is now I am going to, I'm going to shift gears slightly and I want to be really clear about um, what I'm accessing and um, what I am uh, not accessing. So everything I've looked at so far, well, so the um, Chronicling America page is freely available to everyone, to anyone around the world. I'm going to go into uh, databases here at Cornell and find um, a list of uh, newspapers. Libraries pay a lot of money um, every year for access to electronic databases. So you have to, they have to limit their access so people who are affiliated with the um, with the institution. Of course, I am affiliated with Cornell. I'm a librarian there. I'm employed there, um, and so uh, I can get in and use this database. And I'm, and I and I want to and it's really important to see what what we're going to see here. I'm only using this as a side example. Uh, I guess I'd say. So I'm going to do this search for schooner Mary Anna here. I'm limiting this only to the Baltimore Sun. So I'm not even um, looking at all of Maryland. I'm looking at just one newspaper from 1837 to 1998, and I found 3,300 results. And it's a really big difference, and it's a very important to note uh, that, that that difference exists. And 
the reason that it exists and the reason why these are so different is because the company that put these together, um, <clears throat> the company that put these together uh, spent a lot of time and money to actually transcribe all of the content that went into these databases. And that's not the case with Chronicling America. Chronicling America took images of all of these newspapers, then they did apply OCR, the optical character recognition software, to the um, images that they had. But that's very difficult work, and especially with older newspapers, the accuracy is very low. And so you, you don't see um, a lot of great results. So I, what I'm trying to do is highlight the value that a researcher gets from these subscription databases. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But the next thing that I want to highlight is, is a sort of a path in between the two. And that is the California Digital Newspaper Collection. This is just, I love this collection. It's just so amazing. Uh, they have tons of California newspapers. And not only do they have, um, what, 15 and a half million pages and 50 million articles, but they um, allow... Where and they have they have done what Chronicling America did. They scanned in um, everything and then they did OCR work on it, and then they took a look at what's there and they created a solution where individuals can fix these uh, the text that you uh, see on this page. Let me scroll in so anybody can participate in this. And um, if you are looking at, uh, let's go to the top of this article uh, i'm sorry about the um it's about all the things i thought i had uh everything turned off but apparently i didn't um let me see if i can make that go away that should work uh so you can let let's see i want to see the top of uh let's see this one abraham davenport in the old days well there's some some edits that could be done there anybody can log in create a um a free account and then just start editing this and correcting it i just think it's the most amazing thing and i i, I do this a little bit on my um on my free time and it's it's really kind of fun because it is it is making the content available and then really making the content available because it becomes so much easier to search this particular service uh is done by a so this is a free website the, the content of the searching is all free um and it's underwritten by the university of california system and they use a, a product by a company called uh viridian and so i was looking around to see what other collections are in this um are done by uh viridian and i discovered that um one of them is the cornell daily sun uh so i i work at cornell um, and our friend uh, uh, Dee um, attended Cornell as well. And so I thought I would take a little look and see what I could find. And this is an article from 10th of September, 1985. And here we see a mention of Dee O'Regan, uh, along with her field hockey teammates headed to uh, Europe to play um, field hockey in the Netherlands. And it's a little bit dark, Dee. I can't, I can't really tell which one's you. Are you the one down there? I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I'm uh, um, on the bottom, second from the right. Right there? Yeah, it's me. Okay, excellent. <laughs> well, so I kept doing a little bit of searching. <clears throat> and then I found another article about a few weeks later. Um, <clears throat> and Cornell defeated Dartmouth for apparently the first time ever in uh, field hockey. And Cornell freshman forward Beth, Beth Paciello scored the first goal of her career and the only one of the game as the Red won its first home opener since 1980. So she's a first year student and that's uh, that's great for her. But it's interesting to see, well, why uh, did she get to play? Why was this her, this for her first game? Turns out it was her first varsity game. She was called up from the JV squad to replace injured junior Dio Regan, who was out for the season with a knee injury. Sorry about that. Man, you're making this painful. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, this is the stuff that you can find in, in newspapers and it's just so great. It's just so interesting. And I, I, I really enjoy exploring these things, but I also, I, you know, I was looking at, 
at this Daily Sun archive, and I wanted to show you a bit about some how some of these look. I think I looked at some, well, look, a bunch of are, are missing completely. Um, I'll just take this one as an example and um, see what I find here. Over here on the side, this is what the OCR machine read uh, when it looked at this text here. I think it's kind of incredible. That's absolutely terrible, obviously, and no one can understand what um, what was intended there. And for whatever reason, this particular implementation doesn't allow one to edit uh, this text here. 